often give recommendations based on what species or what type of turf grass you have. But the interesting thing is, is that most people can't tell what turf grass they have. So today we're gonna to spend a little bit of time going through the anatomical structures in a grass plant and help you understand how you can distinguish tall fescue from bluegrass, uh, Kentucky bluegrass from buffalo grass, buffalo grass from zoysia, any of the grasses that we commonly see. So let's start by talking about the structures on a grass plant. Number one is how does that leaf emerge from the stem? We call that the vernation. When, when the leaf comes out of the stem, it can either come out folded or it can come out rolled. The grasses that come out folded will have a distinct midrib. The grasses that come out rolled will not have a distinct midrib. Two examples are Kentucky bluegrass, which has a distinct midrib in the center of the grass leaf blade, versus tall fescue, which has more a more uniform appearance. Tall fescue is rolled out of the bud. Kentucky bluegrass is folded out of the bud. Another thing we want to talk about is growth habit. Does it have rhizomes? Does it have stolons? Or does it have none, which would be a bunch grass? And finally, things like color. Color isn't the best identifier, but at the end of the day, it does a pretty good job helping you understand um, or distinguish between certain grasses. The blue-green color of buffalo grass, for example, versus the emerald green color of Kentucky bluegrass and the dark, vivid green color of tall fescue. So let's take a look at those structures and the individual grasses, and then you can go out on your lawn and determine which is which. Let's take a look at tall fescue. It's rolled in the bud, so there's not a distinct midrib. Um, its growth habit is primarily bunch, which means you won't see rhizomes and stolons, although a few tall fescue varieties do have very small rhizomes. It has a very rough leaf texture. If you run your finger across the leaf from the top down, you'll get kind of a sandpapery feel that you won't see in many of the other grasses. Kentucky bluegrass. Kentucky bluegrass is folded in the bud, so it has a distinct midrib. Um, it has rhizomes, so if you were to stick a shovel in the ground and pull back and you see those really stemmy, whitish things in the ground that are not roots, those are rhizomes, that would be, it could be Kentucky bluegrass. The, one of the key identifiers of any of the bluegrass species, not only Kentucky bluegrass, but uh, uh, rough bluegrass as well as annual bluegrass, is it looks like a boat shape at the end of the leaf blade prior to mowing. We call it a keel. It looks like a boat keel, and that's a real distinct identifier. Buffalo grass. Now we're talking about warm season grasses. The warm season grass buffalo grass is rolled in the bud. It has stolons and it has a bluish green color. So sometimes bluegrass next to um, buffalo grass is that you can tell simply by the color. And it has two different kinds of seed head, a bushy one, which is the male seed head on the surface and down below the seed pod. And finally, zoysia grass. My least favorite grass of grass is all the grass that's grown in the state of Nebraska. It's also a warm season grass. It is rolled in the uh, bud. It, it is, uh, has, has rhizomes, so often that's how you tell it apart from buffalo grass in addition to being much thicker and denser. A more emerald green color, um, and uh, I rarely see seed heads on zoysia grass, but when you do, they're unique and a little bit like crabgrass. So now you have the majority of the information you need to correctly identify what's in your lawn. Because if you just look from the sidewalk, it's really difficult to tell. Now that you have this, you can choose the best management based on the university's recommendation or recommendations of others to make your lawn the best lawn on the block. 